Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our second edition of Deeper Dive, our new program. Um, my name is Jeff Harms. I'm the Education Manager. And today we're going to be joined by our curator of marine mammals, Brittany Blades. And she's going to be talking about one of the favorite animals we have at the aquarium, the sea otters, and how we care for them. Hi, my name is Brittany, and I am the curator of marine mammals here at Oregon Coast Aquarium, meaning I get to take care of our three sea otters. Oswald, Nuka, and Schuster, and also our seals and sea lions. So sea otters are very unique marine mammals where they do not have a layer of fur in order to stay warm in that cold ocean water that they live in. So the ways that sea otters can stay warm is one, they have the densest fur coat out of any animal in the animal kingdom. It is so dense that you can't even part their fur enough in order to see their skin and the water never even touches their bare skin. So that's one of the best ways for them to stay warm is by having that really dense fur coat. If you make an okay sign like this, you, that's about a square inch of space, making an okay sign and placing that onto Oswald's body, you would be able to count up to 1 million hairs in that little tiny square inch of space. Compared to the average human head, you'll be lucky to count up to 700 hairs in that same area. Now, another way they can stay warm is by generating a lot of heat from having a really fast metabolism. So they have to eat a lot of food every single day. They have to eat up to 25% of their body weight every day. And uh, if you think about how much you might weigh, it's a lot of food. So uh, sea otters, they are eating shrimp, crab, clam, squid, sea urchins, abalone, uh, they have quite the variety of a shellfish diet. Uh, sometimes they will eat fish as well, but uh, it's a lot of food. And uh, sea otters end up being very efficient foragers. And a way that they can be efficient is by using what we call pockets. They have a loose flap of skin underneath their arm that they can shove a lot of food inside of. In fact, We've given our sea otters live crabs before, and they have been able to shove a whole Dungeness crab in each pocket and then have the third Dungeness crab on top of their belly, mowing down. So those pockets are really beneficial for them in order to successfully survive out in the uh, open ocean. This is Oswald. Oswald is our youngest sea otter. He is seven years old and he was found off the coast of California, making him a southern sea otter. So the, the range for the southern sea otters are off the coast of California, and the range for the northern sea otters are off the coast of Washington, British Columbia, Alaska, and even over to uh, Russia and the northern tip of Japan. And unfortunately, we do not have sea otters on the Oregon coast, but we hope to have them return to the Oregon coast sometime soon in the future. Every now and then, there is one or two that will pass through. And if you think you see a sea otter, please take a video of it and share it with us here at the aquarium so that we can identify if it is a sea otter, where the sea otters are hanging out on the Oregon coast. For the, the, for the future to decide on where that area to reintroduce sea otters might be the best base. So that's a really great way that we can help sea otters return back to the Oregon coast. We would like to have sea otters return to the Oregon coast because they are what's known as a keystone species. So they have a really important role they play in the kelp forest that they live in. They eat a lot of sea urchins, and with eating all the sea urchins, then that creates a lot of space for kelp to grow and a lot of other marine animals depend on that healthy kelp forest. So what we have seen in areas like the Oregon coast and areas off the coast of Washington, California, and Alaska, when sea otters were hunted to almost complete extinction during the fur trade, the, uh, the areas where sea otters were hunted the sea urchins didn't have their top predator of the sea otter. And so the sea urchin population increased and the sea urchins eat the whole fast of the kelp. So that's the very base of the kelp. 
and the sea urchins mowed down a lot of those kelp forests where it looks like a barren desert under the sea rather than the lush kelp forest that used to be there. And without having that healthy kelp forest, all the animals that depend on it, they also disappeared. And uh, so they actually have a term for it, it's called the sea urchin barren. Now what's cool is once those sea otters were reintroduced back to those areas or once their range started to expand and they came back to those areas where the kelp forest had disappeared, once the sea otters returned, they started eating those sea urchins and the kelp forest came back. With the return of the kelp forest, all the other animals came back with it. So we're really hoping that something like that can happen to the Oregon coast with the return of sea otters. So sea otters are a really special animal, not just because they're the cutest marine mammals out there with all of that fur, but more importantly, the impact that they have on our ecosystem. But Oswald's story is that he was found stranded as a young pup in Morro Bay, California. Good. And uh, because he was stranded as such a young pup, he was taken in by Monterey Bay Aquarium where they were able to rehabilitate him by pairing him up with a female sea otter who was learning how to become a surrogate mother uh, to any future stranded pups. So it was the first time that she was paired up with a pup and was learning how to play that role. So that way she can be successful with uh, rehabilitating and teaching young pups that were stranded in the future to be able to be released back into the wild. Oswald, because he was a training pup for this surrogate mother sea otter, um, he had to have direct human interaction and that is the reason why he was not able to be released back into the wild. Now Oswald, he has uh, been here with us since he was six months old. He came to us in 2014 and um, he has a very fun personality. He is the sea otter that is the most calm with new and different things. So that's one of the reasons why he's one of our star sea otters for different encounters like this. Now the way that we take care of Oswald is through training him with positive reinforcement. So you see that I'm giving him quite a bit of food here. And uh, one of the thing, first things that we train our animals, our sea otters specifically, is just to wait calmly in the water before we ha hand them food. And they're trained to take their shrimp, crab, clam, squid, fish directly from our hands with their paws very calmly. So just like you would train your dog at home to take a treat gently, they take the shrimp gently. Once they've learned that, then we can start pairing the word good every time that they get a piece of food with them so that way they know that that word means that there's going to be a possibility of reinforcement. So we just say good and then they get their reinforcement. And then from there, we can start training them actual behaviors. So one of the very first behaviors then is we train them pause. So this is behavior where they focus onto the buoy here and then I can say, pause, touch. So now I can touch his entire body, make sure that he's completely healthy, good. Um, we train them to be able to let us examine their whole bodies so that way we can check for any cuts or scrapes because they do roughhouse quite a bit just like your dogs probably would do at home or even cats. So it's really important for their health and medical care that we're able to have them participate with it. We can also check out their paws. Paws. Good. So here you hear me say that word good to let him know he did the correct behavior there. You might also notice that sometimes we have them do fun behaviors and that's just a great way to break up the uh, medical behaviors which usually mean that they have to hold still for a long period of time. So fun behavior can be something like wave, good. Or it can even be something that's a little bit more high energy, like a hop out of the water, hop, good. Uh, we'll see if Oswald can show you how tall a sea otter is. Oswald, stand, good, go, go. <laughs> 
So sea otters are the largest of the, uh, the otter family. So the la largest otters out there. And uh, they can, the northern sea otters are a bit larger than the southern sea otters. So Oswald being a southern sea otter is a little bit smaller than Nuka, our northern sea otter. But the northern sea otters can weigh up to almost 100 pounds. Whereas the southern sea otters, they might average closer to around six, 60 pounds. And Oswald's a little bit smaller on the male sea otter side. He's only about 55 pounds. So right now we're giving Oswald some piles of ice. He tends to find the ice really reinforcing. Otters, they are really good. Like I had mentioned earlier, they're really good at pocketing things. So we might see him pocket some of this ice. So it looks like that's what he's doing right now. And then he's going to hold that ice inside of his pocket as he walks away on his other three legs. So that's a really great adaptation for them to be able to be efficient with foraging and grabbing as much food as they possibly can uh, from the bottom of the kelp forest. So they're going to be grabbing sea urchins, crabs, clams. Well, I'm working really closely with Oswald, you can see that Oswald and I do have a relationship to it, with each other. Uh, if you do see a sea otter out in the wild or any marine mammal out in the wild, please keep a safe distance away from them. It is illegal to approach a marine mammal. Uh, but Oswald, he's lived at the aquarium for almost his entire life. And we have the permit to be able to house sea otters here at the aquarium. So while it might seem like sea otters being the animals that have the densest fur coat out of any animal in the animal kingdom, maybe it would be, seem like they would make a good pet. Uh, they it is illegal and also on top of that they have the bite force of a black bear they have really strong jaws because that's a crack into those uh, dungeness crab claws and sea urchins and uh, so you do not want to get too close to those teeth right now you can see that oswald is grooming himself a bit and grooming is extremely important for sea otters because they need to keep that fur coat nice and clean so that way it's keeping them warm. If their fur gets oiled, then that can cause them to lose a lot of heat. So they really depend on that very dense fur coat. Sea otters spend most of their time in the water, but as you can see, they can crawl up onto land like Oswald is doing here. And they might just look a little awkward when they walk on land. They're definitely more efficient in the water than they are on land. And our sea otters, Oswald specifically, seems to really find ice reinforcing. So sometimes they'll bury their head inside of it, they'll roll around in it or they might just grab it and uh, eat it. They like chomping on it as well. So they're used to chomping, cracking into really hard shelled items. Oswald is also checking out probably to see if I have any other food here for him. So this window that we have here is actually something that we can utilize for veterinary procedures. So we can have multiple veterinarians looking at Oswald, checking out his eyes, his nose, his teeth and paws. They can look at him safely without having to all crowd around him inside of his area. So that is something that's really beneficial of having this window here. Thank you all for joining us today. I hope that you enjoyed learning more about Oswald and sea otters in general, and we hope to be able to see you all soon. So, uh, no, there are not any real physiological differences between the northern and southern. Really, the main difference is just their size. So the northern sea otters are a bit larger than the southern sea otters, uh, but really not by a whole lot. Nuka is 65 pounds, and between 65 to 70 pounds, and Schuster and Oswald are around the mid-50s for their weight. and. Uh, 
And so that's something with the reintroduction process would, it would actually be Southern sea otters that uh, would potentially be reintroduced to the Oregon coast. And then there is a chance of the Northern sea otters coming down to the Oregon coast as well. And that's something that would actually increase the genetic diversity of the sea otter population, so. Uh, sea otters can live under human care. They can live into their late teens, even their early 20s. Um, and out in the wild, they have a lot more challenges to survive that long. So typically out in the wild, males live, they have a shorter lifespan living into their early teens. Uh, and then females can live into maybe their mid-teens out in the wild. But uh, sharks, along for the southern sea otter sharks are the highest mortality rate uh, for death for uh, sea otters out there so it's pretty it's a tough life out there <laughs> yes yeah uh once again yeah the uh, white sharks are uh, the top predator for sea otters for, along the california coast and that's actually something that is stopping the southern sea otters range expansion to come further up north. And um, yeah, so that's the, the main cause of death um, for southern sea otters are white sharks. And then actually for northern sea otters, orcas will also uh, prey on sea otters. But the interesting thing with the white sharks is typically juvenile white sharks, and they're not actually eating the sea otters. It's more of a misidentification of prey. So they're taking a bite, realizing it's not something that they want to eat because the otters do not have a layer of blubber like other mammals have. Uh, and then they just leave them. So that's a lot of the sea otters that end up stranded are sometimes it's due from a shark bite. Uh, and then orcas, it's kind of the same thing. There's not a lot of caloric value of orcas eating otters. It might just be, um, not really sure exactly why the orcas are hunting them, but that is uh, their other predator out there. So that is on purpose because uh, males can be very territorial with each other. And so we have decided to have only males. It's a bit easier to manage an all male population uh, rather than if we had, let's say three males and one female. But that being said, it's not impossible and um, if something happened where maybe we really needed to take in a female sea otter pup, it might be something that we could try since we do have three separate pools that we can separate the otters out into. But um, our ideal population would be taking in uh, just male sea otters. Oh, good question. Uh, his favorite food are Tillamook Bay clams. So he has some local local clamors who uh, Oswald just decides that that's uh, his favorite type of clam that he prefers. Uh, so it's pretty fun that he supports a local business. <laughs> uh, so he got the name from, we went through a few different uh, beaches and areas along the Oregon coast and uh, the Oswald, uh, I guess Oswald State Park or Oswald Beach. Um, it was, that ended up just matching the most with uh, Oswald the otter. It's pretty fun to say. And then there's the Oswald State Park uh, that goes with that. So that's how we decided to name him. Yes, they do bite. <laughs> sea otters have a very strong bite force and it's something that they do on a regular basis out in the wild. They're, uh, that's something that they need for their survival. And that's also how they mate is by biting the nose, the male sea otter will bite the nose of the female otter. And uh, so that's something that uh, they do quite often uh, as far as biting humans. Uh, if you saw a wild sea otter and you try to get too close to it, then that could be uh, a consequence. 
but um, with our sea otters, thankfully, we built really strong relationships with them and um, we reinforced them for being calm near us and take a lot of safety precautions to limit any sort of chance of us getting bit by an otter. But uh, they do have a very strong bite force, similar to that of a black bear. So you don't want to get too close to those chompers. Uh, Schuster's our oldest sea otter. He is nine years old, and he also was rescued off the coast of California by Monterey Bay Aquarium. He actually was, uh, he had a lesion on his side that we think was probably from his uh, mom getting bit by a, a white shark, and he had a very small little lesion from that. Uh, and then uh, Oswald is seven, and then Nuka actually just had his eighth birthday this weekend. So uh, all of our otters are pretty close in age, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, they can, they actually are pretty shallow divers. Uh, they can dive to um, like maybe around 100 feet just down to the bottom of the kelp forest. Um, but as far as for how long they can hold their breath, it's also not very long. It's about five minutes. Uh, yeah, they they can be pretty temperamental. I, I tend to compare them a little bit more cat-like versus dog-like. So I always say that the sea otters are a little bit more temperamental like a cat versus pinnipeds, seals and sea lions are a little bit more like a dog. So with the sea otters, you can be touching them for a bit and they're totally fine with it. And then all of a sudden, this is a trained behavior, but then all of a sudden they're not okay with it and they'll let you know. Um, compared to the sea lions and seals, sometimes they'll actually seek out more of that behavior and um, they give you a little bit more of a warning than what a sea otter would. Uh, yeah, so there are some plans. There's a feasibility study going on right now that the Alaka Alliance is, uh, is uh, funding and going through. And um, so the feasibility study is just to see if it is actually scientifically feasible to introduce the otters back to the Oregon coast. And, um, and it's making a lot of headway. So we're not really sure exactly what that will look like. It should be concluded uh, within the next year. So we'll be able to give a more solid answer to that, but there are some motions right now, really big motions to a uh, reintroduction effort of sea otters to a Oregon coast. Oh, favorite part of my job is probably hanging out with the sea otters. <laughs> um, but really it's building the relationship with the animals and uh, getting to see their behavior and comfort level with me grow. Uh, one of my favorite moments was when I was actually training Schuster when he was brand new here at the aquarium. Uh, he didn't know me at all, and he was on the opposite side of the pool from me. And uh, every time I'd come in, he'd dunk his head underneath the water. And then I slowly would just reinforce him by tossing a piece of food directly to him, not forcing him to come near me. And any time that he would make a movement closer to me, I'd give him another piece of food. And within just a few days, he was coming right up to me and being calm. And uh, then I was able to hand feed him shrimp to his paws within a week. And so it was just really, really cool to see that uh, change in comfort level and trust and building that relationship. They typically will have just one cup at a time. It is not impossible for them to have two cups, but it is, I think it's unheard of two pups actually surviving. Uh, there is, that's actually one of the other um, high rates of mortality for sea otters is, uh, is sea otter 
moms and pups not having enough nutrition in order for them both to survive. So uh, if you imagine a sea otter mom, she's having to feed herself at least 25% of her body weight every day to just maintain. And then she also has to feed that pup even more uh, food. And so it's a lot of energy that is wasted, but um, yeah. No, we don't get in the water with the sea otters. So um, I had mentioned earlier about their bite force and us being safe with them, as safe as possible with them. Uh, we uh, want to take away that risk of being in the water with them. Uh, we do get in the water with the seals and the sea lions, but uh, not with the sea otters. Oh, that's a good question. Um, they can uh, walk on land. They can walk on land for a bit. Uh, I wouldn't say very far though. Um, that was onshore, right? Yeah, like how far, yeah. Yeah, on land. Um, so they can probably, and this is just using my best educated guess, I don't know the exact number of the distance, but uh, I would say probably at least, they could probably go a quarter of a mile on land, but that would be pretty rare. They are definitely awkward on land. Oh, that's an excellent question. So the way that we deal with negative behaviors or a behavior that we do not want to reinforce is we simply do not reinforce it. So we do something where we'll, let's say, uh, we're asking an otter to put their nose onto the buoy the target pole that was shown in the video for asking otter to do that. And then maybe they bite that buoy. Um, that's something that we do not want to reinforce. And so what we'll do is we'll just uh, sit there with no reaction at all for three to five seconds. And then as long as the otter is calm while we're giving them that little bit of a break, then we'll reinforce them with a piece of food for staying calm and letting us let them know that that was incorrect. Um, and then if let's say the otter does it again, then we might do, uh, we call it a time out, but what it is is we will uh, maybe redirect the otter to do something else so we can reinforce them for that. So we'll re maybe ask uh, something that's an incompatible behavior of them biting the buoy, we ask them to hop out of the water like I had asked Oswald in the video earlier. Uh, we can ask them for that, reinforce them, and then uh, let them know that their session is done for a little bit, say you're all done, exit the habitat, and then we'll come back uh, once the otters look like they're nice and calm, and then we'll reinforce them for that calm behavior again. All right. Well, I think that's all the questions that we had and we're about out of time. So thank you all for your questions and for joining us today. It's really fun for us to be able to talk to you. Um, look forward to next month, um, the third, yeah, third Wednesday of every month we'll be doing this and it's a surprise. Um, so we're not gonna let you know what it is yet, but it'll tell you what it is in your newsletter. And thank you, Brittany, for joining us and talking to us so much about Oswald. Yeah, you're welcome. I hope that everybody enjoyed it.